Well, as Sam says, I'm in the business of pain, and I'm passionate about pain. <laughs> Maybe I should rephrase that. I see people who inspire me because they have to deal with pain every day. The moment they wake up, the first consciousness is pain. So I see these people and I think they're heroes. And I call them heroes. So, ladies and gentlemen, one out of five of you here now have pain. Pretty important to think about that. I see people with back pain, neck pain, headaches, Crohn's disease, abdominal pain, and they do the best they can. And I try with them to give them hope. And that's what I'm talking about tonight. Hope is what they need. They need to know that they have inner resources to climb the mountain that they're climbing almost every day. The commonest uh, pain that I see is definitely back pain. People bend over, I was talking to a lady at dinner, bent over the crib, came back, pain. I mean, it can be very simple. And I'm going to talk about three people with pain. And just a few more remarks. The idea that a person can go without sleep, go with being irritable with their friends, go with depression, and still keep going is resilience. And we're going to talk about resilience tonight. Okay, what's going on here? Why, she got an iron on her face. Has anybody here heard of shingles? This poor lady had a rash on her face and it looks like, you know, acne or something like that, but then after the rash goes away, she's left with a condition called post-herpetic neuralgia, which is very painful, burning. You'll notice it says, if you can read the iron, it says hot. And if you've ever touched an iron, you know how hot that is. So this lady was referred to me and walked into my office and she said, you know, doctor so-and-so referred me to you. I could not tolerate any medication whatsoever. And she referred me to you for relaxation therapy, visualization, talk therapy. So that she said then, I don't believe in that stuff. What am I going to do? Her husband was there. He was very graceful and he was a little less uh, angry. So we did the relaxation and she, you know, after 20 minutes, didn't work. So I said, well, maybe, you know, weekly. Come back next week. So anyway, she came back next week and she wasn't quite so angry and, and it, she wasn't in quite so much pain. But, you know, the relaxation, visualization didn't work. So, you know, doctors sometimes feel humble in situation, and I felt plenty humble in that situation. The husband was quite nicely relaxed, <laughs> but she still had her chin slightly protruding. So the third time, I said to her, well, you know, desperately, 
Have you ever gone to the dentist and had your face frozen? Or your gums and then your face? You know, we all know that, right? And she said, yeah. I said, well, close your eyes and use your imagination. So she did, and she I'd used up some of her reservoir of failure. <laughs> so then she became quite quiet, relaxed. Her husband was again, you know, quite relaxed. And so after about 20 minutes, she opened her eyes, and she said, by God, you know, my face is numb. And I said, relieved, how did you do that? <laughs> Wanting to know. <laughs> she said, for some reason I thought of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. And these seven dwarves, inch high, were marching across my face. Doc, Sneezy, Dopey, and all of them. And instead of having pickaxes, what do you think they had? Syringes with Novocaine in them. And she heard the song, Hi Ho, Hi Ho, as they did their job. So this wasn't the end all or be all, but you know what? After that experience, she realized she had inner resources. She became hopeful. There was a shift in her mindset. And that's the essence of what I'm talking about tonight. That shift. What is it? It means that things can change. And you may have the power to change them. And this is what's lost in people with any adversity, chronic pain in particular, right? So let me see if I can explain what's going on here in, in oh, we got to the next guy. Yeah, central sensitivity. This is a new idea in pain, the world of pain. If pain keeps battering at your brain and spinal cord, it becomes more and more sensitive. Not good. So what do you do, you know, with that situation? You have to find a way to reverse it. With chronic pain patients, they actually lose neurons after a while. So how do you reverse it? Well, there's the notion of neuroplasticity. Anybody heard of that one? Your brain can change itself. And so with that experience, she had with Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, she rewrote some of her brain pathways. How do you like that? So we'll, we'll revisit that again in a second. Okay, this guy, can you imagine, walked into my office, holding his head, swearing at the top of his lungs. This is an office in the hospital and using the F word on top of that. <laughs> so I said, please, just sit down, close your eyes. And, you know, desperation brings sometimes good things. And I said to him desperately, just go to the most comfortable place you've ever been in the whole life, in your whole life. And he just went like that. He was motivated. You know, people in pain, if you ask them to go in the corner and spit nickels, they would do it. <laughs> they want to get out of their pain. So anyway, he went to a little tin shack in Missouri. He was 45 when I saw him, but he went back to age five. And at that time, he was settling down with his parents and his eight brothers and sisters. They were having a good time, telling stories. And he was there, he heard the, the pitter-patter of the rain on the roof, he told me, when he opened his eyes. And when he opened his eyes, he started looking around. For what? 
I said, why are you looking around? I said, he said, my headache, it's gone. Wow. So his physiology changed to match the five-year-old's physiology. And it blew his headache right away. So that's another example of neuroplasticity, inner resources. And then he became much more hopeful about his migraines after that. So the last uh, case I'm going to talk about is this lady here, triathlete. She ran on sore foot. It blew up into a very painful condition called complex regional pain syndrome. It's a mouthful. Anyway, cold, blue, swollen. You know, you could put a Kleenex on her leg and she jumped with pain. So she couldn't walk, lost her job, or at least the job, she couldn't work. So the power, uh, in this case, the hope, oh, boy. there, you see the team behind her there, the team, this time, the team was, was, uh, the, pers the way this lady got better, she saw a physio, an OT, a psychologist, a doctor, and she actually got better and went back to work. And she is in the audience right now, and she's given me permission to ask her to stand up and give a wave. Robin? <laughs> 